communist dictator Ceausescu, that country was hardly a place to find Americans shopping. Now it is, shopping for babies. How do you buy a baby? Well, you find a middleman who'll take you to a family with children for sale. They're not hard to find. Romanian babies are now the hottest item on the Romanian black market. If you're a reporter and you don't want to be recognized by the hundreds of Americans in Romania trying to adopt a baby, you do what I did. You wear a black wig, you get your cameraman to pose as your husband, and you record the whole unbelievable scene with a home video camera. The man with me is Marcel, a baby broker, who took us to meet a mother who wants to sell her children. One is eight, the other is six. Uh, the, uh, the children have the same father. Oh, to our astonishment, the haggling began almost immediately right there in front of the two little girls. Marcel was outraged at the mother's asking price of $2,000. I'm crazy, but I want this crazy to be that I want for mother. Uh, no, $2,500 for both. Where do you find a guy like Marcel? All you have to do is mill around the hotel lobbies in Bucharest, and it won't be long before a baby broker finds you. So you decided for a boy or a girl? We don't care, but I think we pretty much, we're interested in the newborn, to be honest with you. We take this encounter with a baby broker named Christian with a hidden camera. How, how long is this process going to take us? Uh, at least four weeks. At least four weeks. How much is it going to cost us? Probably anywhere from $3,500 to $7,000. Help us out here. Where does that money go? Who gets that money? Does it... <laughs> I know, I know, but we... Bribes, we've... Uh, bribes, a lot of bribes, uh, uh, nurses, uh, mother of the child, uh, judges, attorneys, uh, uh, crown judges, uh, people that have been at home, so everybody, everybody wants want something. Nobody wanted a baby more than Tova and Alan Martin from Arlington, Texas. Like everyone else who comes here, they wanted to adopt. They didn't want to admit that they'd go so far as paying for a baby, but the longer we sat with them, the more they told us. I've known of many instances where people are paying over 7000 for these children. Do you have to pay this money? No. It's my gift, yeah. You look at me funny. No, it's my gift. Are you sure? No. Um, You're not sure. No, we're not. Uh, I guess we can tell the truth. Uh, They're not going to want to hear it. Tell them what's the truth. The truth is, you do have to pay for these children. Now, tell me about that. Uh, you do, and you have to make deals. You're meeting up in the light of that. No, but everyone knows. Everyone knows that you're going to, but they close their eyes. But you can't close your eyes if you're trying to adopt because buying and selling is the heart of the process. In our search for a newborn baby, middleman Marcel introduced us to this woman. She's unmarried and just two weeks away from giving birth. Marcel wanted $5,000 for the baby. He said it was a bargain. After all, we'd heard of a Canadian couple who had just paid $25,000 for a newborn. Marcel is a wheeler dealer who started working in black market money changing, but soon switched to what is now more lucrative, babies. In the same house, we met Costica, four years old. He was much less expensive than a newborn baby. His mother, who's also pregnant, would sell him for $500. The man in the white shirt is Costica's father. He's saying, how can I give away my child? Marcel's contact man, Mihai, tells him, don't worry, you'll get money, and the child will be okay. We asked Marcel what this family needed the money for. 
He said they wanted something to go with their cassette player and TV, a videotape recorder. I gave my family a gift, and with that gift, they um, bought a color television and went to the dollar shop and decked themselves out in new clothes. And the children still didn't have any food. They had to go next door to get some bread from the neighbor. Shane is from Canada. After four and a half weeks in Romania, she adopted two little girls. They cost her about $6,000 and a lot of anguish. I was horrified. There's no way. I'm not going to buy a child. It's not what we came here for, and, and I, I can't do it. And um, my interpreter told me that these families are very poor and that, you know, they, they're selling their children because they love them. And at first I thought that that was true, but I, and I'm sure it is in a lot of cases, but it's so you, think, you think some parents are just selling them for money, yeah. period. Definitely. To buy a color television. Yeah, most definitely. Over and over, we heard variations of Shane's story. For an American father, the joy of having a new child is shattered by new demands, outright extortion from the baby brokers. That's what happened to David Smith of Siren, Wisconsin. I've been told by my translator that uh, even though I had my child, there were still willing, there were still other people that were willing to pay more money for him. And they were willing to do anything. Were they trying to get more money out of you? The translator and the lawyer, yes, yes. They just kept trying to milk me for more money all the time. Did you pay more money? I've gotten to the point where I've had to pay more money. I, I just, you know, you become, yeah, you become so desperate that you'll do anything to bring home your children and to, to help you, help with your family. But you'll get your child. I sure hope so. Today I'm trying to fill out the final applications and hopefully on Monday we'll be able to go. They get the child, they fall in love with the child, and then it's more, and then it's more. After they have a child, but the, you know... Well, yeah, because once you get the child, you're in a situation where you cannot back off. Exactly. Well, you're hooked. And then they start almost squeezing you. They squeeze you for anything they can get. Is this common? Pretty much. And there's nothing you can do about it, right? Unless you want to tell them here, okay, take the child. Children sharks will always exist. But what we are trying to do is to, to make the business non-profitable for them and have the American parents and Canadian and others deal directly with us. Bogdan Balthazar is the spokesman for the Romanian government. Do you know that uh, Romania is providing one-third of the world's adoptions right now? I, I could easily imagine. In, in very cynical terms, an American told me a year ago, he said, don't you understand, buddy, that this is the last reservoir of Caucasian children in the world? So it is. Meaning white. Which, which is really white. At the American Embassy, the waiting room is packed. So far this year, the embassy has processed more than 400 adoptions. A thousand more are in the pipeline. After they finish with the Romanian bureaucracy, adoptive parents have to deal with American red tape, which for many is a painful ordeal. For an adoption to be legally accepted by the United States, a couple must prove that the child was abandoned by both his Romanian parents. There are no real uh, focuses here in Romania where you can obtain general information that you can trust. Consul General Virginia Young gives regular briefings to parents on just what is and what isn't legal under U.S. law. There's nothing in our law that says if they paid a thousand dollars, uh, that that makes it illegal. Well, how can, how can our laws accept uh, selling children? Well, I don't think it's, it was even uh, considered at the time that the law was put into effect. Uh, but well, how do you feel about it? You know what's going on here. Well, it, it's, it's unethical, it's immoral, it's repugnant. But 
but it's not my job to make moral observations about what's going on. The Romanian government is trying to get rid of the middlemen. Early this year, they set up an adoption commission. Adoptive parents are supposed to register with the commission, which puts them on a waiting list. After several weeks, they're given a single name of a child in an orphanage. But if that child turns out to be unsuitable, they go back on the waiting list. It all works so slowly that it's inadvertently fanning the corruption. Middlemen like Marcel find ways around the commission's regulations. He took me into this orphanage outside of Bucharest. His local contact's wife works here. Middlemen operate through a network of orphanage nurses who put special children aside for a price, and the authorities are never involved. Few of these adoptive parents had any success going through the commission. Most got their children from private homes. They come to Romania, often in groups organized by the 300 agencies in North America claiming expertise in Romanian adoption. David Liviano, an American, has brought over a number of parents and arranged adoptions for them. How much does he get per baby? It was hard to pin him down. Do you charge a fee? No. Nothing? No. So how do you... Uh, we, there's a budget that's been created which handles my expenses and all the expenses that the lawyer needs and the, the uh, supporting team that's created for the uh, family. So who pays that? The family. So what's your fee? That was my question. The, the uh, fee uh, ranges anywhere from 6000 to maybe ten, twelve thousand dollars 12000 Well, what's your part in that? Uh, all my expenses included in Romania. And nothing else? Let's just say that it is just very little, just to... Are you getting rich off of this? No. With Who's my getting... heart, yes. But financially... Well, let's say, let's take a case. Let's say it's a $12,000 case. And you only get a couple hundred? No, cumulated, I would have to say that I probably get about 20, 25%. If you want to go through a lot of heartache, okay, and a lot of work, staying here for four to six weeks, if that's what it takes, six weeks. you're going to get a baby. You're going to get a baby. Mm -hmm. We waited 12 and a half years yeah. to have family. I know when I get home, everyone says in a month or two, you're going to look back and you're just going to laugh at the whole thing. Because I was crying at the beginning. I was crying night and day. And even until yesterday, I dream about being on the plane going home to America. Who knows how many families are in Bucharest right now dreaming about being on a plane going home to America with a baby. Whoever they are, tomorrow morning they'll most likely be hanging around a hotel lobby trying to make contact with a broker who'll take them on a trip like the one Marcel took us on. Capitalism has finally come to Romania. But when the commodity is babies, that's a marketplace on haywire. Suntem în direct. Am văzut un reportaj din anii 90 al emisiunii americane difuzate pe CBS, 60 Minutes, cea mai prestigioasă emisiune de magazin de știri de pe această planetă. Investigații. Și investigații. În aceste imagini pe care le-ați văzut, concluzia era una crâncenă. Capitalismul a ajuns în sfârșit în România, dar când copiii sunt marfa, lucrurile parcă au luat o razna. Uh, acolo, în imaginea aia, l-ați văzut pe, acest, pe, pe personajul pe care ei l-au denumit Christian, 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 pe care l-au prezentat ca fiind baby broker. Baby broker, brokerul, știți ce face, tranzacții. Deci era omul de legătură. Asta 